All right. Um, yeah, this is another one from that truly criminal um, channel. These are well good because it's like she proper goes in detail of everything, the back, the build up, and then the yeah. Once the police start getting involved, um, but this one is a a disturbing call, the case of Linda Mags. So yeah, I don't know where this is in the world, but yeah, let's go. Pontypool, Wales, home to roughly 30,000 people, Wales. two of which were David and Linda Maggs, who lived together at 11 Lansdowne in Sebastopol. The couple had been together since 1988, but had initially met in 1977. Linda had been raising her two children, Kerry and Andrew, on her own after her first marriage had ended. She worked incredibly hard to support herself and her children, sometimes working three jobs to make it happen. David had also been married twice before. They had been together for many years when they decided to marry, and in August of 2002, they tied the knot. Andrew and Kerry had welcomed David into the family, and the couple looked set to begin the rest of their lives together. 74-year-old Linda had an incredibly active social life. She was the member of a dance group and was often out with her group at dance clubs. She also loved being a grandmother and enjoyed going shopping for clothes with her beloved granddaughter. She took real pride in her home and garden, which was often the centre for many social gatherings. Linda was incredibly close to her two children and they shared a tight bond. She was always on hand to help or lend advice whenever needed. Her son Andrew described her as a beautiful, kind lady with a huge heart. Her 71-year-old husband David had worked as an accountant but would later retire. The pair enjoyed travelling together all over the world, including the United States and Australia. Uh -oh. However, there was one thing that was a source of contention for the couple. Money. Prior to the marriage, David had wanted Linda to sign a prenuptial agreement. But she didn't. She said as they were married, everything should be shared between the two of them. However, once they were married, they had separate bank accounts and even paid for their own food if they went out for a meal, something her daughter Kerry thought was odd. David didn't share her busy social life. On the occasions he would go out with Linda to her dance shows and clubs, he wouldn't engage or participate. Instead, he would stand outside the venue and smoke. In 2009, David had become more and more reclusive, as he had had his driver's license taken away due to having epilepsy. Now already, it's kind of true what she said, that everything between them should be shared. If you're going to enter into a marriage, you shouldn't even need the prenup. You should trust the person you're going to marry. However, marriage is a bad contract for a man. And to be fair to this man, it's like... Um, what's her name? Paul McCartney's wife, the second one, Heather Mills McCartney. She did not deserve that amount of money she got because she wasn't there with Paul when he was already established as to who he was and his position in the world and in music before he met her. So you shouldn't have the same, um, the same entitlement that the woman that was with him like Linda I don't think Linda was in with the Beatles either but do you know what I mean they when the Beatles finished she was in a band with him so you can see that they kind of had that relationship where they did share things so yeah but then on the other hand if you're going to get into a marriage you have to see it as you share both like the paying for meals is crazy. And this is the thing. When women talk about female roles and that 
uh, don't assume females need are going to be the female role. But then there's times where a man is absolutely expected to be the male role and do the typical male thing like pay for dinner. Um, or if someone was to attack her and he did nothing, it's going to make her look at him in a lesser light because he's not fulfilling his male role of being the protector and a part of the male role is the provider to a protector and provider that's what men are and the truth of the matter is is with all these like removing of gender roles there's for men there's certain roles that you can't remove and no matter how much a girl says she wants i don't care how much of a girl a girl or a woman says that they are strong and independent and they don't need a man to protect them. If you was out with a man and something happened to you and that man stood by and let it happen, you are not going to look at him in the same way as you did before. It's just how it is. So I'm kind of on both sides of this. I think if you're going to enter into a marriage and you're going to sign that contract, you shouldn't need a prenup because you should 100% trust the person that you're with and you should share everything. But however, she was not there when he made his money. So it does change things. He was already, he had money. He was who he was when he met her. So she wasn't there on his crime. So it does change. But then don't marry someone at that point. The next few years, their marriage continued to decline. They would often argue over money and neighbours could hear them fighting in the back garden. By March of 2020, their relationship had completely broken down. When coronavirus hit and lockdown orders were issued, David rang his GP and was prescribed sleeping tablets and antidepressants. His sister was concerned for him and said he was failing to look after himself properly. She would often bring him food and check on him. His day-to-day -day life consisted of playing cards, watching films and smoking. He had been in ill health for several years, having survived two heart attacks and spending five months in hospital, as well as suffering from emphysema. Lockdown was also very hard for Linda, having previously enjoyed a busy and active social life, not being able to see anyone meant she spent most days upstairs alone. After his heart attack in 2019, he was referred to a counsellor. He was given an anxiety and depression score of 12, with anything over 8 being grounds for a referral. In August, he requested that his antidepressants were increased, and after this, he said he was feeling much better. But in September 2020, another argument between the pair would do further damage to their already difficult relationship. David had called his sister one night and said they had been arguing again and asked her to go to the house. She said when she got there, it was clear that Linda was very stressed. The argument had, once again, been about money. Linda had shouted, it's over, it's done, and David had replied, just go, before going back into the house. Three days later, Linda apologised to David's sister for the argument. On the 16th of September 2020, Linda decided to start divorce proceedings and officially end her marriage to David, citing unreasonable behaviour. After consulting a lawyer, she was advised not to leave the home and David mm. would also not move out. So they continued living together. But the Yeah, that's the thing that they say, because if you leave the home, then that's it. Um, that's the thing they say to women, is to not leave the home were living separate lives, with Linda refusing to clean up after him or cook for him. David had the downstairs turned into a bedsit with a lock on his door, and Linda had the upstairs. While she had purchased locks for her doors, she was yet to have them fitted. As they shared a bathroom and kitchen, Linda said she felt as though she was being stalked by him. He would often sit outside the bathroom while she was in the shower and wait for her to come out. An estate agent would go and look at the house and value it, he described David as chain-smoking and visibly shaking. David told the estate agent he would rather hurt his wife than lose anything. The estate agent described Linda as being very timid. When it became clear that the house could be sold as part of the divorce, in November of 2020, David was put in touch with a housing support worker who encouraged him to look into sheltered accommodation and renting as options for if the house sold. He expressed the same sentiment to the housing officer that he had to the estate agent. Linda was not going to get anything. 
even if it meant she came to harm. He told the support worker that he needed to go to the police, as he had thought about stabbing Linda. The support worker was so concerned that she spoke to her line manager, who advised her to call the police on the non-emergency number and also contact his doctor. The doctor phoned David that day and increased his sleeping pills and antidepressants. After the support worker had contacted them, the police went to the house to speak to the couple. When David's sister answered the door, she said she was in shock. She said the police explained that they were concerned for David's mental health, a sentiment she shared, saying he was a wreck and very depressed. David said he was surprised that she had contacted the police, but understood why she had. He said he felt the police didn't listen to him and that their visit wasn't worth it. An officer spoke to Linda, saying there were concerns for her safety. The officer said she was quite flippant and thought it was just his way of trying to get her out of the house, as the house was... Yeah, I thought that was the stalking, like, because that's the truth of it. She's saying, oh, he's stalking me, so I will get out of my house then. Do you know what I mean? I've told you to go and you won't, so like, I'll do what I want. Walk around with my nuts out. But to be honest, he looks like an arsehole. He's just got that face that he looks like an arsehole. Um... Yeah, and the fact that he's saying, and I can I can kind of see where he's coming from. Like men get like that. You hear divorce stories of what men have to go through. You can fully understand why men kill their other half rather than deal with that, rather than lose everything. And like you can fully understand it. But then he's like, I mean, he's need dead anyway. What difference does it make? Fully in his name. The officer said Linda declined a domestic violence risk assessment and the option of a safe house, saying that David had never laid a finger on her. The officer told her to avoid arguments with him and keep her phone close to her. No further action was taken. By the new year, the pair were no longer speaking. Financial investigators had been brought on board to look into the couple's finances. This meant that the house would likely be put on the market for sale. On the 5th of February 2021, Linda was on the phone to her daughter Kerry. She told Kerry that she was worried about how David would react when he found out their finances were being examined. That same day, David's sister had called him at around 9pm. She said he seemed settled and was enjoying watching a film. It's a real movie. The 6th guy. of February 2021, 9.13am. A disturbing 999 call is made. Thank you. Police emergency, how can I help? Please. Yeah, you go to the police, how can I help? Please. How can I help? I just killed the wife. Please. You just got, sorry? Please. Oh, yeah, how can I help you? You're through to the police. Is this an emergency? Please. Is this an emergency? Yeah. Yeah, why? I think I just killed your wife. Your wife, is it? Yeah. Okay, what's your address? Are you at home? Yeah. Call, call an ambulance just in case. And an ambulance as well. Okay, so what's happened then between you and your wife today for this to have happened? Did you have an argument? And Just, just, just call an ambulance and, and call the police. Yeah, you're through to the police. That's fine. Okay, so I'm putting a log on now and I will call the ambulance out as well. Okay, but what's happened? I'm just, I'm just, I stabbed her. You stabbed her, did you? Yeah. Okay, have you got a knife on you now? Pardon? Have you got the knife on you now? No. Where's your wife? In, in bed. She's led in bed, is she? Yeah. Okay. What's your name? No, it's M A W G S. Is it David I'm speaking to? David, yes. Yeah. Hiya, David. Okay. We're going to be sending help out to you now, okay? Is there a lot of blood or? Yeah. Yeah. She's that's some job, and I said it on the last one. When you really hear these, like how she's dealing with it, I think it was a Patrice thing, and I, I agree. Like if that was me, I'd be like, "You what? This motherfucker's killed his wife." But she's just like, "It's your wife, is it? Okay." Like, and obviously they have to be like that, but that's a hard job to do. That's a real hard job to do. And to be fair, he it seems like he done it in whether they was arguing like in the heat of the moment. 
because there's a one in America, mate, that is one of the most funniest phone calls. Of he just rings up and he goes, "Yeah, I'm, uh, you better come get me. I've killed my wife." <laughs> and then yeah, they said, "Is she still alive?" And he's like, "Uh, are you alive?" <laughs> No, she not alive. It's the funniest thing, but this mate, he seems more like it was done in. Although he had, you could say like, he'd been thinking about it, but it seems like they had a fight about. Yeah, obviously them looking into the finances, and he just chucked her up. Didn't you, or do you think she's passed away? Mm, passed away, I think. Okay. And what makes you think that? Can you see if she's still breathing, or is she talking? I don't know. Or... I <laughs> didn't you know, I just, I just lost it. You just lost it. So did you have an argument, did you? I just lost it. Oh, I just can't me. Just help me. You what, sorry? Just help me. <laughs> well, send help to you now, OK? That's what I'm doing for you. I'm going to type this up for you, OK? Oh, God help me. As officers and other emergency services descended on the scene, body cameras captured the moment they went inside the house. As the officer enters, two knives can be seen on the last step of the staircase. Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Jesus. Who else is here? Who else is here? Right. OK. This time you are under arrest on suspicion of murder. The time is 26 minutes past nine in the morning. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defense. Jesus, he looks bad too, like. I'm surprised he even had that in him. He's just literally like a feeble old man. I'm surprised it shows you the male strength of him. Because there is no doubt she's healthier than that. But still a man can overpower her. Like, that's why girls should be careful with shit. <clears throat> If you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. Necessity for your arrest at this time is to protect a vulnerable person and prevent any further injury to a person. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. What do you think about it now? All right, all right. Just oh. try and stay nice and calm for us, okay? Good. All right. You stay nice and calm for us, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, can't leave what? She tried to steal two hoses off me. Okay. Two hoses, for God's sake. Okay. Five months in hospital last year. Okay. What was that for? She came to see me three times. The rest of the time, she ransacked the house, got hold of all the paperwork, destroyed all the paperwork, and tried to claim on this house as well. David's coldness was apparent. He told the officers. Yeah, it seemed. At first I was kind of feeling sorry for it. I do kind of in a way anyway. Especially if that's true. Because it's something like with all this equality between the genders bullshit. Trying to get. Like until you start talking about that. The court proceedings in divorces. Where. It never ends good. There's horrific story that men go through. And I know there's the odd woman that has to pay money to the man. But this is so rare. Um, but at first he just seemed like a kind of... Uh, crazy old man. Had done something that he regretted. And... But then when he started going into, she did this, and she did that, and she did this, it does make him sound like that's cold-blooded murder. Like I say, <coughs> like, 
Bill Burr says when people say there's no reason to hit a woman, and he's like, there's plenty of reasons, you just don't do it. He's like, but to say there's no reason to hit a woman, is he's like, what, you guys never annoying? What, are you somehow levitating above the rest of us? He's like, there's plenty of reasons to do it, you just don't. But, yeah, so, I could, like, it's kind of a weird one because, yeah, I can kind of see both sides of this. There's going to be a messy divorce. He just can't handle that at his age. He's worked for something. He has things. She's trying to take them from him when she really she don't deserve them. And it does seem like their marriage for her was financial because he had money. And he seems like a lot older, so it seems like one of them type of deals. But then he sounds very cold-blooded by saying... Um, basically what he's saying she did this she did that it, it, it makes you f because he's he's not saying we just had a blazing row over this and then i did it this is like going back months that these are things that haven't that he's kind of buried and it's all erupted into this moment 30 years i've been married to her and she doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut so I topped her. As the devastating news broke, the community could not believe what had happened. Flowers were left outside the home and Linda's children were being supported by officers as they faced this horrifying new reality. The truth about what exactly had happened that morning would soon come out. Even though the upstairs was Linda's domain, David had gone up there and taken two large red kitchen knives with him leaving one outside the bedroom door, and he took the other one into her room at around 9am. As Linda lay in bed under the sheets, her estranged husband walked into her room. David told her he wanted to talk about their separation and impending divorce, but she told him that that conversation needed to be left to the lawyers, and she wasn't going to discuss it with him. David became enraged. In a frenzied attack, he stabbed her multiple times. Linda, who was four foot ten, had suffered an appalling catalogue of injuries. She had been stabbed 15 times in the neck, head, stomach and chest. Her arms and hands had defensive wounds, showing that she had tried to fight him off with everything she had. She had also sustained two broken ribs. One stab wound to her chest was 15 and a half centimetres. When trying to understand what had led to this... I uh, know women aren't going to like this saying this but this is what i say i've said things like this before and people say oh I, like, I have women that will comment saying well i know how to fight or whatever and it's like that's not going to do you much good against a man the build of the body is just different it's like our dimensions are different it makes us stronger and makes us faster and and look at something like this. It showed that she, like she just said, she tried to fight him off and couldn't. Now, she looked a lot healthier than he, him. He is literally a feeble old man, but he still managed to overpower the stronger, a stronger female than him. And it is, it's literally nothing but bodybuilding. Like, even in, I said it before, my mate, his sister must have outweighed him by about, eight stone he's stick thin and she's fat them two had an argument and he threw her all around the front room now he ain't throwing me anywhere let's put it that way he's too skinny and too feeble and there's nothing of him literally you could snap him but then put that against a female and especially as he lost his temper and then it's it's literally like two well it is two completely different things two completely different creatures that are built for two completely different things. And this is what's crazy about this gender nonsense that having biological men fight women is just... Like I say, the, the one martial art you should learn, if you're boxing, like if... If I have daughters, the one martial art I'll get them to learn is jujitsu. Because it's not built on strength. The smaller person cannot 
beat the bigger person if one knows jujitsu, if the smaller one knows jujitsu and the other one doesn't. And it, you can argue that women's hips and women's, yeah, the pelvic and hip um, dynamics on a woman is different to a man. So as a woman, you'd actually have stronger hip like we have stronger upper body but like you got stronger so if you can do jujitsu as a woman you would easily tie a man up right easily tie a man up and choke him out um or snap their leg or do you know what i mean you could do that so if i was if i have daughters they're definitely learning jujitsu more than boxing more than any striking because I don't care how well a girl can box. It's a whole different thing than if a man loses his temper and goes at you. That punch isn't going to do nothing. It just isn't. He's bigger. Like He wouldn't even register it. It's just how it is. I had it with a girl who had this kind of feminist. Not She wasn't feminist, but she kind of had this... Women and men are physically the same and... She once was walking down the road. Now, you got to bear in mind, I'm up here. She's down here. She's probably half my weight. Like, she's nowhere near as big as me. We're walking down the road. She barged into me and literally bounced off me. I didn't tense. I didn't nothing. She tried to barge me like that, just playing around, but just ended up bouncing off me. Because it, it's... Yeah... It's just a different, it's a different weight distribution and everything. But anyway, this is what I'm saying. Look at this old feeble man. And that woman was healthy, sociable. In every book, you would have your money on her to beat him. And she didn't. I Granted, he had a knife. But still, if this old boy come at me with a knife or another man, it's a whole different story. Do you know what I mean? It's a whole different story. He ain't going to do shit. But, yeah, with a woman, it's a whole different thing. Like, it, it, yeah, anyway, two seconds. I need to sort the puppy out. Yeah, let's carry on. Officers learned that David had become consumed with the idea that Linda had been hiding money from him and that she was going to cheat him out of money during the divorce. As was seen in the body cam footage, he told the officers that she had tried to steal two houses from him. Investigations were carried out into the couple's finances to see if there was any evidence of Linda hiding money from him or of her trying to dishonestly get more money in the divorce. They found none. But they did find that David had a savings account with £14,000 in there, something he had failed to declare. He admitted to having killed her, but said that he had blacked out and couldn't remember. He told the investigators during his interviews that whilst he had taken the knives upstairs with him, he had only intended to discuss the finances and the divorce. He said he had left one outside the door in case he needed it. He said, She's only four foot ten, but she can be a right madam. The police soon learned about his history of threatening to harm Linda, and soon another witness would come forward with a worrying story to tell. A lady named Pamela had been one of Linda's friends, and then she had become friends with the couple, before a falling out meant she only spoke to David. Pamela had contacted the investigators on the 18th of February and explained that just a few weeks before Linda was killed, she had been on the phone with David and asked him how the divorce process was going. She said he replied, I feel like I could stab her. She said to him that would mean he would go to prison. His response, I don't care. He was remanded in custody. All right, I'll take back what I said about you, Linda, about you trying to get his house. It seems that you weren't. And the only one doing that, see? Untrustworthy people don't trust. It's always a sign when someone doesn't trust you for no reason that they are an untrustworthy person. But yeah. To be fair as well to this man, He's had multiple times he's said to two professionals and friends that he's going to stab her. Like, 
surely some of the blame has to fall on them. It's like when you see these things of um, the kids that shoot up schools and you realise for, for months leading up to it, they've been putting things up saying, I'm going to shoot the school or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's like, how is this not registered? On the 8th of February, he appeared at Newport Crown Court, charged with murder. He entered a plea of guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, adamant that he had blanked out. Judge Michael Fritton would preside over the trial at Cardiff Crown Court, which began on the 11th of January, 2022. Judge Fritton told the jury, it's admitted David Maggs killed Linda Maggs, but there is a dispute about the circumstances in which he killed her. There's a dispute about his mental state on the day he killed her, and there's a dispute about his responsibility for killing her. Defence lawyer Sarah Jones argued that Mags's mental health and depression would have clouded his judgement that day. Evidence of his past health clearly points to something very, very wrong with his functioning at the time. I accept it does not excuse what he has done, she said. Psychiatrist Dr Nuangalapathy told the jury... In my opinion, the degree of his impairment due to depression is significant. This is a case where there are clear and significant mental health problems. In my opinion, this is a case of diminished responsibility. But there wasn't a clear medical consensus, as another psychiatrist, Dr Thomas Wynne, said he didn't think David Maggs had depression. The court heard that David felt he had been stung by his well, two previous now. ex-wives and was adamant that Linda was not going to get any of his money. The prosecution told the jury that Linda was upset, scared and anxious. She told a friend she didn't know what her husband was capable of. A friend told the court that Linda had explained they had argued when David had changed his will several years prior, cut her out of it completely and decided to leave everything to his son. The witness said, About five years ago they were arguing about the will. She said she had to pick up an iron to defend herself. The witness also said she had spoken to Linda the night before her death and they had talked about the divorce, with Linda saying she thought he would lose his temper but added that he wouldn't hurt her and in any case, she could call the police. The prosecution said that David had given Linda an allowance of £30 a week and told her, no sex, no marriage, no nothing, meaning financially she would be solely reliant on her pension to get by. It was argued that David would become verbally abusive towards Linda and would insult her, calling her thick and stupid. Other key witnesses would address the court, the estate agent and housing officer who had witnessed David's behaviour, and heard him make threats towards her life. This painted a very different image from the frail man who was wheelchair-bound and struggled to get in and out of the prison van. David's sister also testified about the argument the couple had had in the garden in September of 2020, saying that Linda had been the one to lose her temper, and that she had never seen her brother use threats of violence until that altercation. The prosecution lawyer called Linda's death a vicious and repeated attack. The 999 call and police body cam footage were also shown to the jury, painting a vivid image of the chain of events that had transpired that day. It was also noted that he had only said he had blanked out when he had been reminded that he was under caution and anything he said could be used in court. After a day and a half of deliberations, the jury had reached their verdict on February 1st, 2022. The jury rejected his defence of diminished responsibility and he was found guilty of the murder of his wife. On the 17th of March, 71-year-old David Maggs was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 20 years that he must serve behind bars. His defence lawyer Sarah Jones said that due to his health and age, However long his sentence was, he would likely die in prison. She said he had asked her to tell the court how sorry he was and that he wished it had never happened. When sentencing him, Judge Michael Fritton called David a self-centred, self-interested, bitter and unpleasant man. You had come to resent Linda in a whole variety of ways. You resented her still having a life, a social life, female friends, loving members of family. You resented her having the courage to stick up for herself and start divorce proceedings against you. I don't think you care about anyone other than yourself, he said. During the sentencing hearing, 
Linda's son Andrew gave a victim impact statement. You claim you can't remember anything, but I don't believe you. When you do remember, I hope it torments you as it torments us. On your wedding day, I made a speech and welcomed you into the family. I wish I had never, ever said those words. Throughout this whole process, you have not shown a single ounce of remorse, regret or compassion. That does not surprise me. Mum always said you would never, ever say sorry. Andrew also added that Linda's headstone used her maiden name of Minahan and not her married name of Mags. We have a one of family. We'd like to personally thank one of the great police officers who have been involved in the investigation. We'd also like to thank one of the witnesses that gave evidence in court, members of the jury and the children of guilty verdict. Without all your hard work, dedication, support and understanding, we never got the justice for a lot of work. For Linda's heartbroken loved ones, being denied the chance to say goodbye was devastating. Having such a kind and devoted woman ripped away from them in the most horrendous of circumstances has left a void that will never be filled. Linda's memory will continue to live on through those who knew and loved her, and she will always be remembered as a devoted mother, grandmother and friend. For those of you that like to listen on the go, we now have our episodes in podcast form and you can now find this via the link in our description box or by searching Truly Criminal Podcast on your podcasting platforms. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't agree with the mental health. Even if his mental health was bad and even if it did play a part in what he was doing is... I think it kind of, once you've done the crime, it's a bit like drug addicts. I don't think any drug should be illegal, but the point when you start committing crime because of your drug addiction, then you're committing a crime and you should go to prison. Nala, will you piss off away from the wires? Go away. Such a little knob. But yeah. Um, yeah. Still, on a, on a, I can kind of see where he's coming from, from a male perspective. There's a lot of men that have gone through divorce proceedings that wish they'd have just killed their wife. It would have been a lot easier. Um, Nala, get away from the wires. Um, and to be honest, I know you can't judge people how they look, but he looked like an arsehole. He just looked like one of them people. It looked like a job's worth. Um, yeah, and it seemed that she wasn't even, she just wanted out. But then the other side of it is, is when they said she's expected to live just off her pension, it's like, well, why is that wrong? Yeah, if you're not his wife no more, then you're not, you're divorcing him. Like, why... Should he pay for the, your, go and get a job. You're healthy enough to have a social life and go everywhere. So go and get a job. Um, I agree with him on that thing that I don't know why it is still expected the man to pay for the woman's life nowadays. It was different back in the day where women didn't have any marketable, marketable skill, where it was all labor like physical labor based jobs like mining and things like that um you can understand why in that case the woman would you'd need to support the woman even after your divorce but nowadays literally go and get a job um so i don't agree with that whole thing when they said she was expected to live off her pension uh, yeah, uh, it's just how it is, I think. But I don't think his mental, because his mental health, like I say, if it was literally they was arguing in the kitchen and he just grabbed it, then I think you could argue more the mental health thing. But the fact that he put an, he took two knives and he'd been saying it for a while, so it'd been in his head. Um. Yeah, and another thing is if they say he showed no remorse, that's a big deal in courts of how you actually 
conduct yourself in the court is a big deal of how you'll get sentenced. And the way the judge spoke about him too is a selfish... <clears throat> but then you can also see he's old, he's vulnerable, he's already been taken advantage of by two women, but then it doesn't... It's like if you get with someone new and the last person you cheat, you was with cheated on you. Um you go into the next relationship with that baggage. He's kind of done that and, and has that kind of expecting she's going to fuck him over where it actually didn't seem like she was. But then the false proceedings is never, proceedings is never pretty. And I don't know why they would live in the same house. She should have. If she wanted the divorce and wanted to be separ separated from him, then that's exactly what she should have done. You can't... There ain't no such things as halfway crooks. In the words of Mob Deep, you can't be one foot in and one foot out. You can't be divorcing him and then also living in his house. Um, Just leave. Just leave. Like It's better for everyone involved if you just go. And I know they say that don't because whoever leaves the house first, the other person's getting the house. Which again, I don't think is fair. Look, if it's the man's house, why would the woman get it just because she's there? And I know you've got kids, but their kids are all old. So it don't work the same. But anyway, yeah, he definitely... Um, it does seem way more premeditated than his defending attorney or defending um, solicitor tried to make out and trying to hang it on the mental health thing it's like a lot of people have mental health problems and they don't stab people uh, and I do think a lot of his hatred was still built up in him from his last two relationships where the women was after him for his money now he's just hypersensitive to that and he doesn't want to be made to look an idiot again he doesn't want to be made to look a fool again but yeah there's some way to go about it 71 and to do 20 years in prison it's like yeah the, the state that he's in as well you're like literally so old that people just wouldn't fuck with you for that reason you're old do you know what I mean Mind you, they did Whitey Bulger when he got in the prison. He was in a wheelchair. They still killed him. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.